This is a brief introduction to MakerBot Print to help our students get started using MakerBot printers. The first thing you're going to want to do here is make sure that you have the palette set to the correct printer. And the way you can do that is by opening up this menu, go to add a printer, an unconnected printer, and then find the one we're going to work with, which for us will be Replicator 5th Gen. Once you've done that, it sets the palette to the correct dimensions. This, what you're looking at, is the build plate of your printer. Okay, now what you'll want to do is insert an STL file, whether you get that off Tinkercad or Thingiverse or somewhere else. Go up to your project panel, add models. I downloaded this clean Flexi Shark off Thingiverse. That's what I want to print. And so there it is, it puts that STL file on the palette. All right, so each one of these little squares, by the way, is a centimeter, so you can imagine how long your print's gonna be here. Now that we have our STL in place, we need to adjust the settings. So I'm gonna show you first our print settings. If you go to custom settings here, down to extruder, you notice that the default temperature is 215 degrees Celsius. Our printer actually works a little better at 195 degrees Celsius. So we go ahead and change that. And then our extruder retraction distance, which is defaulted at 0.5 millimeter. Our printer actually works better at one millimeter. So go ahead and set that. And then what I would do, if you're gonna be printing a lot, is come over here to this custom print mode and name it something. So I'm gonna name this as one retraction, one millimeter. 195 for the temperature and hit plus. And now anytime I want to print, I can just go to that retraction one millimeter print setting and it'll default to all of that. A couple other things you're going to want to keep up with is your base layer. Typically on the MakerBot, since we don't have a heated bed, we want to keep a raft. You could try, if you have a real flat object, try no raft and we'll just see if it works or not. But most of the time we'll keep a raft on there. A couple other things to look at. Another thing to consider is if you need support or not. And I'll show you an example of a print that does need support. But for the time being, I think these are good for our print settings. All right, now the another thing you can do here is you can scale the object. So if I select my object, I can scale it up. And you can hit scale max, and this will be the biggest shark I could possibly print, which is 183% of the original, okay? I like the original size, so I'm going to stick with 100%. But if I wanted to scale it up a little bit, maybe I went 150%, it goes up a little bit. And you can figure that out on, on your own. Another thing is uh, your orientation. So I might need to rotate it. You can do that in 90 degree increments if needed in, these, in the different X, Y, and Z directions. So for example, if my print originally loaded in like this, that's not going to work very well. So I need to make sure I lay it flat. Another thing you could do here is you could pick, so let me change my view so you can see the shark. I could say place face on build plate. So I click that, I select the face or the side of this object that I want on the build plate. I want that to be down and there it goes. It orients it the way I needed to. So there's my shark. Another thing you could do is come over here to arrange and you can say arrange build plate and it'll move the object in the, desire, in the optimal location. So if you have more than one part on the plate together, arrange will arrange the items in a way that helps the printer print better. Once you have all this, you can just hit export. And you notice you're saving a file as a MakerBot file. You can either save this to a USB drive, which is what I recommend, or just save it somewhere on your computer and maybe email it to, to yourself or something like that. You'll have the file there. So I can say this is Flexi Shark 1, something like that. I save, and now it's saved as a MakerBot file. You'll notice it says preparing an estimating report. This process is called slicing. In other words, it's communicating exactly what we need to do to turn this from a picture to an actual 3D printed image. All right, and so there it finished, and it tells me how much PLA material that I'll need to use. That's the actual plastic we use. And then it'll tell me the hours the estimated time it takes to print, which is about four hours and 25 minutes. So if I printed this right now, it would finish around 6.30 tonight. Let me put in another file here. So I'm gonna go up to project panel. Now here's something that you can do in MakerBot that's interesting, is you have several build plates. I can add build plates. Maybe I have a complicated project that needs a lot of parts together. I can add build plates and 
arrange my project over several different palettes. Okay, so I want to print now this Rhino. All right, and there's my Rhino. I'm okay with the size. I'm going to leave the size alone. But think about what's going on. If I print this thing starting from the ground up, how am I going to print, for example, underneath its belly, underneath its chin, and print the head? How would I do all that? The machine itself cannot print in mid-air. So what's going on? What should I do? So you can go to print settings in that case. With this type of object, you would want to add breakaway support. And what breakaway support will do is add things underneath, for example, the belly and underneath the head and the neck. After the print, you'll be able to tear off that breakaway support and just left with the Rhino itself. So that's a setting to keep in mind. If you need help with that, I can help you arrange your item in the correct orientation. We can decide if you need support or not because that is a hard thing to figure out at first. Now here's one more example of a more complicated project that I wanted to show. So I want to print a catapult and it has all of these parts that need to be put together in a particular way. So what I did is I brought in all these STL files and notice I spreaded them out and notice I spread them out over several palettes. So my first palette looks like this, my second one, third, fourth, fifth and even a sixth palette. Now when I look at this sixth item I see that I need to add support there. So I could come in and add support on this palette itself. And what this does is just helps me lay out a more complicated project uh, in a meaningful way so I can keep up with everything. The MakerBot print software allows you to do that and I think that's a great feature. Okay this is a quick guide on how to get started with MakerBot print. Now how do you actually go from this to the machine. Once you have your MakerBot file, you can either print from a printer connected to where you have your MakerBot print software opened up, or you can save the USB drive and print directly off the USB drive in from the MakerBot itself. If you have any questions on this, I'd be glad to help. Good luck with your prints. I can't wait to see what you have, and thanks for watching.